In Atlanta, United States, neuroscientist Greg Burns is adapting a harmless medical technique to study brain activity in dogs. Okay, so stand by, we're gonna start the noise. MRI is a technique that's been used in humans for over 20 years. Normally we use it to study what the brain looks like, but with a few tricks we can actually do what we call functional MRI, which looks at brain activity, and by analyzing the data we can figure out what parts of the brain are doing what. But doing MRI in animals is an entirely different game, mainly because of the requirement that the subject has to hold absolutely still. The need to keep still makes it impossible to scan most animals unless they're sedated. Not a good way to study their brains. One, two, three, steps. But Greg has teamed up with Mark Spivak to devise a program to train dogs for the bizarre conditions they'll face. The key is a steady supply of snacks. Well, a lot of humans have difficulty taking MRI. First of all, there's the enclosure, which provokes anxiety in many humans. Second, there's the absolute motionlessness required. And then there's the noise. Without proper conditioning and training, the dogs would just run scared from the MRI. Those that respond well to training graduate to the real thing, like Katie. MRI is painless and does no harm. It's at the very cutting edge of animal science, and it's beginning to give us some fascinating insights. Patricia, we're going to begin the first scan with the localizer. Are you ready? One of Greg's earliest experiments is revealing an important clue as to what happens in a dog's brain when it receives information from its senses. First, he's looking at a visual signal. So Katie's in the scanner right now, and Patricia is actually giving Katie hand signals. So we've already taught the dogs through lots of practice that this means food, okay? So every time Patricia puts this signal up, we're going to be looking in her brain what that brain response is. And we're actually going to be looking at a very specific area called the caudate nucleus. We also have another hand signal that looks like this, and that means no reward. After scanning many dogs, Greg's results show the area of the dog's brain that responds. If we look very closely, we find that the area that's common to all the dogs corresponds exactly to the same part of the human brain that responds to reward. Rewards like money, music, food, all the things that humans like, it's also activating in the dog's brain. Even though Katie isn't actually seeing food, she can take a piece of visual information and interpret it to anticipate that she will receive food. And she's responding emotionally, just like we do. And this was pretty amazing because it didn't have to be that way. Dogs could be so different from us that they, you know, they might have responded completely differently. But that doesn't seem to be the case. And when you think about what this requires the dog to do, it reveals a complex chain of thought. The results are showing that dogs and, and probably most animals have brains and minds that are far more sophisticated than we ever gave them credit for. 